address first, please? Thank My you. name is Charles Maurice. Um, I have an economics background, so some of what I might say might sound like it's coming from an economics background, but um, Mr. McLaughlin, I, I appreciate what you're doing. I appreciate you keeping the uh, cost down, and you've been really fortunate to keep financing. But I know that is probably going to go away in the next few years. It's actually probably by the sort of the end of this year. Those Federal Reserve and proving economy, you know, interest rates are probably going to be higher, uh, at least going into next year. So our refinancing options will kind of niche. Um, but I want to make address one point in the budget because there isn't much fat in the budget, I have to admit. But increasing positions at this time might not be the best course of action. Particularly, I'm going to point out, I mentioned three because I may be more familiar now. ESL, I know, I don't, I don't mean, I, I really appreciate the fact that that's a very important subject. The students need that kind of instruction. But how much of the population is really ESL bound that we would need to double, almost double the number of positions in that area? It seems a little excessive. Especially considering that salaries and benefits are going to increase in later years. Um, and as far as a part time floating nurse, I really don't see the efficaciousness of that kind of a move, being that, you know, at any given time, there you are know, five schools that a nurse could be out, even accounting for screenings. You're carrying half a position almost, or maybe a little more than that, three quarters almost, and you're really not solving the problem. The problem seems to be that maybe what we pay, you know, you know, substitute nurses is not on par with some of the other districts, like Bridgewater and Chatham, which pay, you know, roughly, you know, $30 more, or what they'll come out to be like. Maybe five to ten percent more. Um, maybe doing that would be more efficacious than adding staff that are carried forward with the benefits that come in years. Thank you. Can you please sign in on the clipboard? I did. You did. Sure, so just briefly to respond to public comment on that particular issue. Um, going backwards, I guess, with respect to technology and um, uh, things specific to PARC, um, this question's come up a few times, and we really don't keep track of technology specific just to PARC because the technology that we're investing in is used across the board, not specifically just for PARC. Um, but, you know, in complete fairness, I think everyone 
uh, understands, and I've spoken about this a couple times with respect to the Chromebooks that we purchased, we wouldn't have purchased those Chromebooks um, unless we had the extra incentive of having to do part. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, um, we had $600,000 cost for those devices, and I believe the second half of that is, is being funded uh, in the 15-16 budget. So I can tell you that uh, as far as a specific figure goes, I don't have one for you, but the other half of the $600,000 investment in ProVotes is part of the 15-16 budget, so that may answer your question in part. Uh, as far as the ESL position and the uh, nursing position, um, you know, the, the amount of time that the students have to have is requisite, and we're, we're almost out of compliance right now, given the number of students that are supposed to be getting ESL services. I didn't say are, I said almost. The meeting is being recorded. Um, so as far as the ELS, ESL position goes, I can assure you that uh, it's there because we've got a meet a requirement that we're really only going to keep right now. Um, as far as the nurse goes, um, you know, we are looking for a relatively economical way to address some of the problems we're having in, having in managing nursing services. Um, you, you mentioned uh, the substitute nurse problem. Um, the assistant superintendent on my left has come to the board a couple times about the amount of money that we pay substitute nurses, and we have tried raising that amount of money. Uh, I suppose it's an option to try revisiting that. However, uh, we, we find that we also need nurses for field trips. When, when schools go on a field trip and a building is left without a nurse, if we don't have a nurse to go on a field trip or we have to cancel a field trip because we can't uh, provide equal access if we don't have a nurse on the trip. So that's another problem that we're dealing with. Uh, and, and it is true, too, that with the uh, number of students that we have in the district and the, the amount of work that needs to be done, it's, it's really, you know, it, we, we get into having to bring in a substitute nurse so that the regular nurse can get all the, the other work done that she needs to get done. Uh, so those, I think, are two um, significant needs. Uh, and, and certainly, we this board doesn't take our staff lightly. Uh, you know, we're working with them. It's a serious matter, and, and you know, we're doing the best that we can. Uh, and and uh, relatively speaking, a part-time nurse um, not eligible for our health benefits um, is certainly a reasonable option. Just to speak on your um, question about unfunded mandates, um, we did do a lot of other rating last year, almost two years ago, when we found out about the technology needs that we would the park to the, um, to the state. And we made our displeasure known about it's just yet another kind of mandate. I don't know if they were listening or if they cared, but we did write more letters about it to them. Um, okay, so at this point, um, we're up to the superintendent's report. I think what I did was I, I kind of summarized that based on the questions that the board members were asking that were very specific to what we thought we might or might not be able to accomplish, that um, Frank continued with his idea of a mock schedule um, and having had the opportunity to present some of the issues that came up in a mock schedule and having had the opportunity to um, let some of the supervisors in a little bit more on the picture, as um, I think Beth pointed out, to try to get more of the teachers involved for their feedback on it, that it was, it was uh, my suggestion that he continue to move forward in looking at gathering more information to bring back to you. Okay? Um, as far as, sure, as far as uh, superintendent's report, Oh, uh, we were talking about unfunded mandates, right? Um, so I just, I, I, the unfunded mandate thing is, is an interesting um, question. Uh, one of the answers that I heard, which I'll share, share with you just because I thought it was crazy, but I, I understand that where it comes from, but the idea that uh, if you receive federal or state aid, that you are getting aid and the mandate is not unfunded. Isn't that a crazy answer? So even though even though you got to go spend six hundred thousand dollars on Chromebooks and we're not giving you any new dollars, the mandate is not unfunded. <laughs> so 
That's just the, the, how I think the government views that. But My understanding is that by giving us like the $57,000 right. in our aid, that avoids it being an unfunded right. mandate, even right. though we had to spend almost a right. dollars. So if they had given us a dollar, it, it would have been an unfunded mandate. It would have been unfunded mandate. Right. So um, the only other thing I had to add to the conversation tonight, um, you know, with respect to presentations and superintendents part of us, the uh, two presentations we did tonight were sort of the, the big agenda items, but uh, I know that we are wrapping up uh, the park testing at uh, William Anna Middle School actually today, I think it's the last day of the regular uh, testing for the EOI portion of the test, uh, and I believe the elementary schools are going to be finished by the end of this week. Uh, the high school uh, finished already, and I, I just wanted to share with you uh, something that I think some folks had did want to bring up and ask myself, which was, will we see uh, more of a drop off in the number of students that took the test? Um, and I don't have those numbers yet for uh, the elementary or the middle school since they're just finishing or not finished yet, but the high school uh, overall saw a, a continued decline in the number of students taking the test. I think they picked up like another 10 or so percent that were not testing uh, when they did the end of year test. Maybe that has to do with, I don't know what, the time of the test, right next to the spring break, who knows, but um, I wanted to share it because it was something I was watching. Uh, and of course, when uh, when all the dust settles, I can give you a more comprehensive report and get the elementary and middle school finished. Thank you, Mr. McCarran. Um, we're up to public comment on agenda. Good evening, Laura Bank, 15 Pitney Court. I have a number of questions about the um, presentation on the high school uh, drop schedule or block schedule. And, um, but I just want to make one comment about um, the fact that we, while we did have an unfunded mandate, we didn't necessarily have to buy Chromebooks. Um, we could have used that money in a different way as uh, other districts, not as well perhaps as ours, um, found other methods. So I just wanted to make that comment. But I do have a number of questions. There are not many particular orders, so I'll just list them out. The first one was, and maybe this was discussed, I came into the meeting about five or ten minutes late, but what is the reason for us to consider this rotating schedule in the first place? Um, the second is, did any of the schools that you benchmarked extend their school day or their school year, the way um, Mr. Hallett mentioned, perhaps adding additional time on the school day, um, you know, might be something they consider in the long run. But I just wondered if any of the schools that you benchmarked um, expanded the school day, number one, and then ended up expanding the school year. Um, and I, I'm curious as to whether or not that's the ultimate objective. Um, the next question is regarding language and math. I noticed that um, that those time periods are extended under the block scheduling, I think, from my understanding. And why is it that the science periods in AP have to sort of vie or fight for the timing when in fact there's so much time added to language and math? Um, and, you know, of course, I'm very curious about that because I, I link everything in my mind these days back to the Common Core curriculum, which you might guess, and whether or not we're enhancing those courses in order to fit in everything that's necessary for park testing. So, I'm a little weary, call me crazy, but um, I'm definitely looking at that from the get-go this time, not, um, not, you know, six or months from now or a year from now when it's uh, already built into the schedule. Um, the next question I had is, my understanding is that uh, we are required to have 180 days of school, um, and I don't know if any other districts have more than that in the state of New Jersey, but 
Are the numbers of required instructional hours broken down by subject area? I assume that the answer is yes, uh, that the required instructional hours. And then how do we track those instructional hours? Um, especially in light of this proposed new change with the high school schedule, H how do we track those? And then, um, you know, how do we account for time in this rotating schedule for things like standardized testing, um, specifically the PARP test, which we know we took so much instructional time out of our schedule in order to accomplish? Uh, the next question is regarding option two and PE and health. If someone is doing option two, and they do that through the entire school year, except for perhaps for the health rotation that they have to do, um, is there a way that we could look at in this new rotation schedule, um, a way to offer students an optional elective instead of requiring them to take a study hall as an alternative to um, the option two PE? Um, And then my last question is regarding, um, regarding the impact of the loss of one of the periods during the day. It seems as though that would, of course, impact a student's ability to take multiple electives, which students do now, and fit in more coursework. Um, many students like to take, especially in 11th grade or in 12th grade, two sciences or two um, math classes or an additional elective that they might not have been able to fit into their schedule earlier on. And I just wonder um, how that's going to still be an option for students when with this rotating schedule and whether or not they'll be able to fit in, um, you know, some of the things that they enjoy now as part of the curriculum. And that's not specific to AP students, that's specific to the whole student population, including CP. That's it. Thank you very much.
Okay, so uh, the reason that I think it, it's considered in general is to increase the amount of instructional time across the board. Uh, I think that the, we'll, we'll post the presentation, we'll get it up on the website so people can take a look at it, but I think that um, in a nutshell, over a 20 day cycle that Mr. Howell was doing this comparison on, you're looking at an extra 80 minutes for almost all class subject areas, with the exception of science. Uh, 80 minutes over those 20 days. So right now we have roughly 41 minute classes. So if you're picking up 80 minutes every 20 days, that's like getting two more classes every 20 days compared to what we have now. And if there's nine 20 day periods in a school year of 180 days, that's like 18 classes more than what you're getting now. So I think the reason that we're looking at that is that's a significant amount of time, 18 more classes than what you currently have. That's the main motivation for taking a look at this. Now, obviously the sciences, if you watch Mr. Howlett and his animation, you can see how this man has lived and breathed the scheduling of science at Ridge High School <laughs> because he starts to move away to a separate science scheduling language that you can only understand if you know what he's talking about. But, um, you know, I think the idea there was um, because the science classes at Ridge already have more instructional time than the other subject areas, the amount of gain is less in the science areas, depending on which particular science course and how much that science course currently has dedicated already. Um, so I'll probably mess it up, but I think that basically the gist of it was the only area where he's concerned that he wouldn't be able to easily get to the same number of minutes that uh, is currently running is in the area of an AP science course, where even if you back up the AP science class to a lunch period and allow the entire lunch period to become part of that science class, that you're still running 46 minutes less in a 20-day period than what you currently have. But um, the presentation will be posted so you can look at those details uh, for yourself. But that was the basic idea of it. Um, as far as minutes being added, um, you know, we can look at minutes being added from other districts and try to find that information. I don't have that. Where do I have the information about days added? I do know that in general in this district we've talked about trying to find ways to add minutes to the school day between the start and stop time because in general we have less than the average number of minutes compared to um, school districts uh, across the state by grade by uh, level, middle, elementary, and high school. And we kind of corrected that a couple years ago at the elementary school. Uh, as far as language arts and math, uh, I think I, I talked about that. We're looking at picking up 18 uh, classes over the course of the school year, and that's not just for language arts and math, that's for all, all traditional 41 minute classes, um, just outside of science, which is its own special case. Uh, the 180 days is a requirement, a minimum requirement. We typically, most districts typically schedule somewhere between 180 and 185 days. They have to do the 180 days, depending on how many snow days they build in the schedule. Some schools have three to five extra days built in. This year we'll have, you know, bar, knock on, fake wood. Uh, we, have, we have 181 days this year. So, uh, as far as uh, minimum amount of time that the students have to have in a particular content area, I believe the statutes are mainly defined on the high school level by credit, how many credits the students have to have in order to earn a diploma, more so than the actual minutes per subject area. Although I know, I know that there are minutes defined specifically for PE. Uh, there's probably more to that story, but I don't have to look at the statutes. Uh, option two, and could students take electives instead of PE? When we initially set up option two, uh, we moved away from letting the students, or we decided not to let the students take uh, courses instead of PE because the initial idea of facilitating so much option two was to actually decrease uh, staff. And if we let those students choose to go to an elective or some other course instead of coming to a large area like you know, a cafeteria for study hall, then you have to pay more staff to, to handle the increased uh, talent 
rules and the statutes. Um, I wrote down multiple theories by my own language. Oh, 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 oh. Right, the, the idea of the, um, uh, the question about does the state maintain, I think the idea was are there prescribed minutes and times for particular things like language arts or PE or state assessment. I'm not aware of any allocation of time for state assessment, but I think the state, uh, if you put the question to them, would view uh, assessment as integral to the instruction, and that state assessment is part of the instruction on time period. That's why there's no separate blocks for it, because you cannot separate assessment and instruction. Uh, and there was a question about whether or not uh, we should or would 60-minute periods facilitate having quarterlies or finals back? Um, I, I can tell you that having 60-minute periods, I think, gives you more flexibility to do things in general. So, you know, you can have that conversation. I certainly wouldn't go down that road right now because I, I, would, I would think if the, if the board approved going in that direction, ultimately, that first we would want to get it up and running and see how it was going. Um, and, you know, keep in mind that uh, even this year, the, the, the idea of uh, summative assessment, personally, I think it's important. I think I'm a, a little old-fashioned, a bit of a fuddy-duddy, and don't like to completely throw out the idea of having to prepare for a, a large body of, of knowledge and, and be assessed on it, because I, I believe you're going to have to do that, most kids, in some way, shape, or form when they get to college. So that's why we, we worked out that step. You see Brian's still here. Or we worked on a schedule, I asked Brian to work with the supervisors and to come up with an end of year assessment for certain courses at certain levels at the high school. And I know we put together a schedule to do that. Um, they don't represent a traditional final exam that would be worth 10% of a, a grade, but the spirit of the request that I had for him to, to set out with the supervisors was to try to provide the students that experience of what it would like to review a significant body of knowledge for the course and try to prepare for an end of year type assessment. And um, I think that was most of the ones. Thank you. Um, we're up to committee reports now. Um, we have some items under finance. On tier four.
I don't think enough information has been provided to, to the community or to the board. So. Any other comments? Questions? Mm -hmm. Mr. Byrne? No, I'm too.
But, but, but that doesn't mean that I have to agree with it. There's a lot of mandatory things going on in this country that I have a big problem with. So, uh, you know, if you see my flag, it's a half mask and tattered. Sandy did a job on it. And I have a neighbor that comes down the street and says, you know, I'm a veteran of foreign wars. That's a disgrace. It's probably breaking the law. You can't have your flag at half mask. And I said, look at what's happening to my country. Now, that's an opinion. But, uh, so I don't have to vote yes on the mandatory yet. And look at the back of my car when I get a chance. I pass. I said what I wanted to. Okay. Okay, so we have any other questions, please? Mr. Byrne? I'm going to say no on A and C and E and F. E and F is, a, is a, that's my recollection of what happened in the ministry. Yes, I'm here.
know, I hate losing instructional time too. When I was in school, I spent a lot of time studying the AP exam. You know, time away. In fact, a lot of my high school experience was preparing also for the SATs. I don't know a lot of Greek and Latin roots that I still remember from those days. <laughs> And it does come in handy sometimes, but, you know, we spent a lot of time on it. However, it did help me when I did face the standardized SAT, the GRE exams, because I had experienced the pressures preparing for a standardized test that, at least for most colleges, is still mandatory for you to enter those programs. So, I just want to make those statements. I thank you for it.
feedback from the end of your testing because I don't have that yet. Do you want to just read the, yeah. the, the big issues? The, well, the smaller issues are more technical. Right, right. During implementation. So the general, the kind of the big general issues that are included here is they get the The testing window for the um, the performance based assessment starts too early in the school year, and there's two problems with that. One is, um, due to the district calendar, the testing starts well before 75% of the school year has been completed. And um, early March is too early to test because of the winter weather disruptions. It really created quite a few problems for us. The second is that the two separate testing windows in the spring for the performance based in the end of year assessments, um, testing takes too much time and causes significant disruption of instruction and loss of instructional time for students. The cost of technology and internet upgrades required to administer the park exams was close to $1 million for our school district. However, we received less than $60,000 um, in state aid for park expenses this year. Administering the park test is very labor intensive for the administrators, teachers, and IT staff. For special education students, there's a whole list of things. Um, some students need paper versions of the test, but it's been very difficult to get enough paper tests from the New Jersey Department of Education. Managing the numerous accommodation tools for special education students at William Annan has been extremely time consuming and labor intensive. For test administrators, especially for the district testing coordinator, the middle school principal, and the district's IT director, there wasn't enough lead time to review the IEPs and accommodations. Um, the state did not show the district the accommodations until the last minute. There wasn't enough time to teach the students how to use the accommodations. Um, and even if there had been more time, we would not want students to lose so much instructional time learning how to prepare for park. And that um, for students that are below grade level, park tests are not appropriate because they can't answer the questions. Um, there's concern about English language learners. The New Jersey Department of Education policy is that all um, ELL students at the high school need to take the PARC English Language Arts exams regardless of their proficiency level with the English language. These students often have to be in a one-on-one -on -one situation with a test administrator, and it's kind of just a question, why is the New Jersey Department of Education requiring students to take an exam in a language that they don't know? <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't make sense to me anyway. Um, and then there was, there's definitely been concerns about the student data that the New Jersey Educa uh, Department of Education provided to Pearson. Um, and even, and so anyway, uh, according to some information that was presented at a recent Somerset County School Board's meeting, the New Jersey Department of Education gave Pearson um, some identification information from NJ Smart for all students who were supposed to take the exams. So even if parents refuse to take the tests, Pearson already has that information. So that's going to create some questions and concerns. And then um, another question that I have is I understand that um, as when the students were finished with the end of year test, they answered some extensive survey questions about the tests. And um, I'm wondering if the school districts are ever going to see any of the feedback from the students, I sort of have my doubts, but it's just a question of my mind. So those are kind of the general issues. So we're going to keep working on the list and the details yes. from the end of year assessment um, and start working on a letter about that. And as far as the resolution, what are other people's thoughts? I don't really want to interject on some of it, but I, I, I would just suggest that the six and seven paragraphs probably be pulled together. So that the, the six paragraph set is where it starts now, therefore. The end of it, I, I would suggest that it say to reconsider the speed of implementation, comma, the amount of testing, and then I would jump to the last part of the seventh, the next paragraph. To reconsider the speed of implementation, the amount of testing, and the use of park testing to evaluate teachers and students. Because I think the way the seventh paragraph is written now, it implies that the board is making 
make some decision about, about those. Um, uh, the idea is you want to send this to the legislature to get them to do something for the government. Yeah, that's a problem. That's not a problem. I see that you have the language. That makes sense.
this value in our own district shows a formative and benchmark assessment. That's what we had before. We had quarterly exams, we had a change of quarterly exams, we were going to use the same exam after year to benchmark the teachers. I do not want the second paragraph. Uh, the way I read it was it says, whereas though we believe in some form of standardized testing, it's like saying we also believe there's value in our own local assessments. We don't want to throw away all local assessments and not, and not have time to do them. I think we're saying we do, we do, we do believe in some form of standardized testing, like external to our own internal yeah. tests. Is what I, how I read it. I, 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 I know it could be read both ways, but the way it's written, I could read it as we, we want to make our own. The, the other thing I just point out about the nature of this resolution and the way that paragraph is written is that it really is just a statement of sort of belief and philosophy. And it isn't in any way that, that paragraph 2 right to doing it, say, say, taking any action in that paragraph. So, and it doesn't address the question of order means or anything like that. So it's just sort of a, a statement of belief that wouldn't really have to be, you know, if, if you were going to change something with the curriculum, then you'd have to, the district would have to go through the proper processes to change something with the curriculum. That's all I wanted to say. This isn't really doing that paragraph. I have never thought that enough folks to get teachers to make new exams. I, I don't know. So I guess what we'll do is we'll um, have committees look at this and come up with uh, another draft and put it in a you know, weekly you know, folder so everyone can look at it. And if anyone else has any feedback after they go home and think about it, you know, and look at it some more, then it belongs. But I guess to make think about the draft and we can figure it um, Okay. <laughs> okay. Is there anything else for board comments? John?
doing, you need to you need to have that. Oh, absolutely, and that's why we're looking at possibly the lunch period, spending it to get the amount of dollars needed, or you know maybe we can come up with another creative way of addressing that. Because believe me, everyone is very aware. Yeah. And just a comment. Because if you did that in a nine period day, if you added 10 minutes to every class, you just lengthened the school day by an hour and a half. I don't think anybody's prepared to talk about lengthening the school day by an hour and a half. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to make a comment, and I wanted to acknowledge, I just want to say thank you for all this information about the budget. Um, I, you know, it's difficult to digest it in the presentation, but um, I appreciate having all this information, and I'm going to go through it, and I may have some specific questions, but, you know, I do appreciate getting this level of detail. Yeah, I'm going to do the, the increase per year. Uh, we got a two-year increase, I have to see what I'm So, I'm going to have some money. So, I 